not that big a deal for me. <laughs> yes, I, I, knew. I, don't know I know who drew this. I know who drew this. Hermit the Frog here, and today we're going over my favorite new book, my autobiography, Digging in the Swine. I'm going to make some piggy squeal. The internet historian bringing up very important topics. I mean, he's bringing up something that, you know, I think everyone is entitled to have uh, for protection. And in truth, it's it, it's a very controversial topic here in the States, you know, worldwide, really, because everyone's got their opinions on stuff. But I think it should go to the individuals. I think it should be, like, hold individuals accountable for the stuff that they have if they commit terrible acts with those said weapons, then they, you know, they need to be, you know, they need to be dealt with and handled and, you know, arrested and you know, all that fun stuff. But, um, yeah, I'm, I don't really know what, uh, what to say here. So I'm just going to let the internet historian, uh, do the talking. So we're just going to go ahead and get into it. This is... The Internet Historian uh, Weapons. Here we go. Weapons. Weapons. Am I good oh. with a weapon? Yes. Uh, I sorry about that. Weapons on me? Uh, <laughs> at uh, a little bit. Uh, jumped the gun far. a little bit there. Aha, uh -huh. check out this weapon I just made. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a real gun, by the way. No, it's an airsoft. You can see the little thing right here. It's just... This is a little airsoft gun that Kathan left down here, and it's it's not loaded this either. This is a real knife. Yeah, that this is a real might knife. Not be very short. And uh, yeah, here let me put this to the side here. Yeah, I don't think it's very short. Yeah, sorry. We just I just had to. I just wanted to try and play a part of the joke there. I clicked the video and it get, it just went weapons, and I just figured it'd be a little callback to uh, when me and Micah. And Caleb and uh, Ben all pulled out I feel like weapons. This is like a Counter Strike style knife, where like I can take it out and I run faster. Yeah, that his is more of a K bar style uh, with the blade, where it's got the like, uh, where it's got the uh, the uh, the little uh, grooves in there to like make it easier to pull it out whenever you stab somebody. I got a kookery. Uh, this kookery is uh, basically it's. I got it on a whim, and uh, it's it's a good it's a good knife, it's a good knife. But I'm just gonna sit right there for now. So yeah, sorry. Also, the the paper windmill with the freaking with the uh, friggin' uh, razor blades. That's that's good. That's rich. <laughs> Stay still. Predator <laughs> missiles. <laughs> They're working in league with the torpedoes. Tactical oh, airstrike. Oh, Jesus. What's air supposed to do? Oh. All this and more on this episode of In the Battlefield. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry if I sound weird. It's because I went to the Asian uh, supermarket today. Yeah. Because we bought some astroturf. Fake grass. Yeah, I didn't want to take care of it. So we astroturfed some of the backyard, right? Mm -hmm. It looks like shit. Anyway, <laughs> the neighbor's cat has started shitting on the astroturf. <laughs> what am I going to... I can't just kill the neighbor's cat. I'll, I don't think I can get Not away with that. that attitude. I didn't want to get into it with the neighbors either. Like, oh, excuse me? Do you know you've got a cat and it shits on... Like, you can't police a cat in the same way that you can a dog. That's right. The cats are a law unto themselves. <laughs> so I went to the Chinese supermarket, right? Because obviously the thing to do is to buy about three liters of chili oil and then fill a weed sprayer with it and then just start spraying the oh my god in chili oil to the point where it just kind of turns red and then it starts trying to take a shit and then it goes oh god it turns the grass red or it turns the shit red and you're hoping that this is gonna like <laughs> scare the cat so, something's going wrong here this i is... need to talk to a doctor <laughs> so you know the grass is looking a lot redder than it usually does wait this is the astro turf so yeah. you essentially just dyed <laughs> fake grass red. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and, you know, the whole place reeks of chili oil. <laughs> and if the cat shits there anyway, then, boy, is he going to have won this war. Could you not have just <laughs> let the shit continue? And uh... No, it's an outrageous amount of shit. He's taking, like, three shits a day. <laughs> like, he doesn't even keep it to the sort of back of the property where you wouldn't notice it. It's, like, right on the front. That's the first thing a guest would see. And, and then we've got a cat. And so people think, oh, you guys are 
just fucking dirty. Why don't you clean up after yourself? No, you don't. Un- oh, yeah, so anyway, that's the reason I went to the Asian supermarket. And while I was there, there was some sour candy. Ooh, ooh. That's the full story of why I'm eating sour candy. Oh, ooh, fair enough. Okay. So oh, the gay, the bomb. gay bomb, right? Uh, I've heard of it. I forgot the it, whole story so it like, sounded... It was, it was theoretical, right? Yes. Wait, say <laughs> what? I forgot the whole story started with, sorry if I sound weird, and I forgot what the point we was getting to was. <laughs> well, sorry, if I sound, sorry if I sound weird. But, um, yeah, I'm, yeah. My cheeks are currently contorting because of the sour candy. That I got at the Asian supermarket while buying chili oil. I was waiting for there to be some horrible a- accident with the chili oil sprayer that made him sound weird because he had sprayed himself in the face or something by accident with it. No. It's like, sorry if I sound weird. I just got over crying because oh. I sprayed myself in the face with chili oil because I'm trying to keep this cat from shitting on my astroturf. Yeah, which we, we don't have a cat like that. But I remember one time we did have a dog that would always come over. And it would just like take massive dumps. It was a big dog too. It was like a, a Saint Bernard. And it was like mounds of crap, like this big around and like that tall. And I just remember my dad coming out one day, seeing that in the yard, and literally just being like, All right. Goes over and talks to the neighbor. Neighbor basically tells my dad to, to F off. So my dad grabs a shovel and basically just shovels it over to my neighbor's sidewalk or my neighbor's walkway and just like just (laughs) and he's just like there you go now it's your problem and yeah basically eventually they did work it out but gosh just for the longest time i remember my dad told me to like like if the dog came onto the property don't pet it just like just like make it like make it leave and it was a big dog, and I was kind of terrified of it because I'd seen Cujo. I knew I knew what happened when a dog that big wants to rip your head off. They nothing much is gonna stop them. It's like being attacked by a polar bear, almost. That's as Simon Fisher is for <laughs> a rainbow. I think the chief idea behind it was okay. You make your enemy uninhibited uh-huh. and extremely aroused, uh-huh. and then they are more likely in a non-combat situation to start doing it with each other. Uh-huh. It wouldn't work in a fight. No one's gonna go. Oh, I'm just too horny to fight. Then they just start running at their own men in the other direction. <laughs> but maybe it's a permanent change. You've got your wife back home home and your kids what if you come home gay sorry honey i gotta be my true self now this might really backfire oh. because it might make the opposing army like even more bonded with one another because now they're just like i gotta yes. save my dude because like <laughs> he's, he's, he's my lover I love him. <laughs> i'm just thinking now there's like super elite gay army it's just you and me skin on skin stripped to the waist <laughs> That are just so Damn. loyal to one another that they are unstoppable. Just like rolling in rainbow camouflage. Everybody's just like super afraid of them. <laughs> rainbow camouflage reminds me of the old G port. You ever fired a gun? You yeah, only wear my camouflage yeah, so it'll it keep you well big. hidden. So when I was in America, say, I made say a- again. I said the rainbow camouflage thing reminds me of Ollie G. It's like, respect to you all for wearing your camouflage. It will keep you well hidden. They're all in like fucking orange and purple camouflage. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 whenever I think about camouflage and like rainbow camouflage, I think of Peter from uh, Family Guy wearing the clown outfit in Vietnam. He's just like, just like when I got in trouble in Vietnam. And then he's just like, he walks through as a clown and everyone else is in camo. He's just like, hey, they're all going to shoot at you because they're going to think you're soldiers. No one's ever going <laughs> to try and shoot the clown. Yeah, but uh, they're, now they're talking about guns and uh, yeah, internet historian has fired a rifle. So that's cool. That's cool. wonder what rifle it was. Was it a little twenty two, or did you just go like full on 50 cal and like blow your shoulder out? Beeline for the gun range. Yeah. Went full hog. I wanted to see what it was like. And uh, yeah, it yeah. turns out. Yeah, it really made me feel like a man. <laughs> People do say that though, you know, a bit dismissively. But there must be something absolutely instinctual 
about holding a weapon you will sort of notice it when you if you ever go for a hike and you pick up a stick that just feels really well weighted to hold and you could use it like a weapon i do find myself like naturally carrying that around and just sort of feeling good about it <laughs> yeah it's yeah. the ultimate tool <laughs> yeah i think there's something about that in the past big stick. the ones that pick up big, a pretty big stick. good stick and just walk around with it survive a lot more absolutely they're so loud though oh god i can't stand how loud that's the thing it's like oh. If, if you really think about it, if you're out in the wild, right, like on a hike or something, uh huh, right, and you're just walking around, technically, if wildlife does happen to come at you, mm -hmm. and you don't have anything on you, you're kind of just like, what if a mountain lion, right? like, what but if once like, you pick up that stick and you're like, this is a nice way to stick, I could use this as a weapon. Why? Why would you like that? Why would your brain tell you this is a good thing? Is because it it's, is. It's a good thing but, for your uh, survival. Like, you know, like a fucking... Genetically, we're kind of predisposed to, like, want to survive. I yeah, mean... something shows up to attack you, and at least you have something to try to whack it with to scare it off. Yeah, like, so. we, we wish to defend ourselves, and if all of a sudden we're just like, oh, hey, this, uh, you know, this uh, stick here, you know, it's a good stick, you know, it's a uh, pretty solid, you know, it's got a good swinging range. You know, and I mean, I'm gonna carry this with me. I, I've talked to people like like Quinn, for example. Like apparently, used to be or still is very afraid of guns. Not as um, much. I've kind of talked them down. But like, obviously, I've met a lot of people that were like, "Yeah, I don't really like the idea of guns." And then the first time they were actually talked into going to shoot a gun, they always just kind of like it. You know, it's just like, well, I didn't expect to like the feel of holding the gun and stuff. You know, and it's like because. When you have a gun like that in your hand, I believe it's your brain going like you have just increased your chances of surviving at the current moment mm -hmm. like a hundredfold. Yeah. Because if someone were to attack you and you had this, then you can actually keep yourself alive. And I think that's just yeah. your brain kind of telling you like, yes, this is a good thing, like essentially. Yes, it is. And I and that's one thing that I've always wanted to portray with guns is that, you know, they're a means to protect oneself. They're not, you know, people can say for hunting and all that, yeah, it does make hunting easier, but Cause I the think main the thing that always goes the, into people's heads when people tell them that, like, yeah, like, I like shooting guns, it's fun, like, holding them is cool, like, all the people who are anti-gun think you're a psychopath, they're like, you just like holding that gun because you could go kill someone with it, and it's like, but I'm not no. going to go kill anyone with it. I don't wish to now, hurt anybody. Now, if someone comes to kill me, then yes, I will I kill them back. I am able to defend myself. Like, and it's just like, well, why can't you just give them what they want? It's like, what if they want my life? Yeah, what if they just want to kill somebody? What? Because violent crimes happen all the time. All it's the like, time. It's like, literally, like, what if a rapist comes after you? Are you really... You're, you're really, really going to be like why are you gonna, are you give gonna them play what they want exactly like, no, fucking no you're not never going to be like that no I mean it, it's I've heard that argument a thousand times and here's the thing I'll always say this it depends person to person like me I try to be a responsible gun owner I try to keep my guns maintained I keep them in a safe place I don't you know brandish them. like Nick when have you ever seen my gun, like me wielding one of my guns around the house? Never. Exactly. Because I am a responsible gun owner. You gave I, me your shotgun completely unloaded one time for a bit, and that was... <laughs> yeah, that's Other it. Other than that, I don't even I, know where I your remember, guns are I remember at. doing that bit. I made, like, doubly sure the shotgun was empty, because uh, I was just I like... Made, I made triply sure when you gave it to me, too. Yes. Yeah. I was a Boy Scout, so I know how they work. Exactly. So. And, you know, I it's, it's a Man, shotgun I've still, had for quite some time. You know, I'd, uh, exercise proper discipline with it and everything and the only thing that would have ever been blown away would have been your webcam yeah <laughs> exactly that would have sucked, i remember that but. bit that was a good one uh but honestly responsible gun ownership i don't think an individual should be punished for the actions of another i mean everyone wants to play the society game it's just like well the greater society and i'm like but here's the thing about the greater society the greater society has to be a 100% consensus. You're never going to re reach a 100% consensus on anything. Dude, you could cure cancer tomorrow, and there will still be people out there saying that you're an awful human being. Yep. You could you could build a bridge that you know connects the world. You could you know save millions of people. There are still going to be people oh, out yeah, there who hate you. If you cure cancer, there's going to be a lot of people that fucking hate your guts. Yes. Like, you're probably going to get assassinated. 
Yes. Like, yeah, you yeah. Won't live medical very industry long. professionals. Yeah. They're going to want you dead because guess what? You, you just have cost officially them a lot of fucking money. Their finances. Yep. Ugh. And people will kill over money. It all the time, dude. All the time. Anyway, back to this. Ones that pick up a pretty good stick and just walk around with it survive a lot more. Absolutely. They're so loud, though. Oh god, I can't stand how proper loud ear they protection, are. bro. Oh, silences are banned in most states, I think, and it seems to me yeah. like the reason that that legislation has come into place is because everybody watches the movies and thinks that a yeah, gun with a silencer, they're on, not like, like that in real life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it's in Hitman, but it's actually just there so you don't go fucking deaf. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah it's that's it. Really loud. It's it's not. Yeah. Uns yeah, it's not that much of a difference in terms of like overall. Like you can, you still know a gun's being shot. It's yeah. just it won't be deafening. It's like if I shot a gun right here with a suppressor, like it's still gonna scare the shit out of Kate and Kate upstairs. Well, yeah, like. they're gonna be like, did someone just use a hammer? That it, it will sound like a hammer hitting like hitting the wall. Honestly, like a good like, it'll still sound like that. But you know. An unsuppressed gun, that is just, whew. It's basically the only point to suppressors is not to keep people from knowing you're shooting guns. It's to keep your own ears from being injured by the sound so you don't have to wear ear protection while you're Yes, 100%. I suppose you wouldn't be able to recognize that sound so regularly. No. Can you silence a shotgun? Oh, you can. Yeah, actually, uh, you adds can. a degree of style to it. The, the silencer is a bit like uh, adding a mustache <laughs> to a gun. Yeah, yeah, it does make <laughs> kind it look of a lot yeah. Cooler. You got to admit that much. Like oh, that lame. Oh, hey, that's <laughs> hey, like, uh, immediately cool. Dun, 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 like I even think he becomes more handsome. <laughs> actually, I think it's just because it makes it longer, and just men like it longer. I'm, that's a, that's. I'm just joking. That's a that's a jab. Some <laughs> yeah, between look. shots, Ooh. you know. Yeah, look at that. Play it again. I'm going to close my eyes and just <laughs> welcome to America's favorite game show: <laughs> silence or unsilenced. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I was definitely silenced. Oh, it sounded like no, but I couldn't really tell. Okay, how about this one? That is definitely not silenced. That is that is. That's a shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Silenced. Okay, all four of those were silenced. Ah, oh, you, you tricked me. I did. <laughs> you correctly guessed that it was behind a pillow. That's a bloody good one, isn't it? Because that wouldn't silence anything. I mean, it might make it quieter for the person who's getting shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think they'll really be giving a shit about if it's <laughs> quiet or not. It doesn't hurt your ears. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, <laughs> silencer. 120.7. I like the idea that off screen, it's just like someone tied to a chair. <laughs> yeah. So now we we'll use the pillow. All right, Jerry. I'm it's not Jerry. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's got tied up. Yeah. <laughs> Shooting Jerry Seinfeld. What's the deal with airplane peanuts? Oh, it actually yeah. took it down. It only went up to 100 decibels. Yes. On twenty point seven. CNN goes for Still, Samuel. like this is the AR-15. Right. A lot of people will buy this just because it's cool. Why else would you buy a gun? Is it illegal to look cool now? Is that what they're saying? I'm sorry, I, I really dislike the sort of moralistic tone there of just like, some people just buy this gun to be cool. I, again, here's the thing about most news media outlets nowadays. Whenever I hear people say, oh, my news source is CNN, or oh, my news source is Fox News, I immediately just like, because in all honesty, most of them are not news sites anymore. They are agenda pushing, like agenda pushing. Uh, what's the word? I'm propaganda, propaganda machines. Yeah. yeah, because in all honesty, it's just like people out there wanting to push, you know, certain ideals. I'm just like, oh my god, they are not actually being honest here. Like genuinely, like this one guy I saw, like he went. He's like, I went to a shooting farm. Uh, uh, to a, uh, uh, he called it a shooting farm. It wasn't a shooting farm. It was a shooting range. It's liter No one else called it a shooting farm. He said he said shooting farm to make it sound like oh they were going there to like kill animals or some shit like that. And instead, yeah. You know, and he was just like, we went to the shooting farm. I put the AR-15 up to my shoulder and I shot it, and the pounding force of it dislocated my shoulder. Why would anyone ever want to do this? And it literally shows like like. They, they play this and then like I think it was on uh, Instagram or something a dude literally like a black dude from Alabama is just like 
this man, this man full of shit. He like gets an AR-15, puts it up against his nuts, and fires it like 10 times. And he's just like, did it dislocate my nuts? Nah. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? What's wrong with you? And it's just like, like oh my God. It, it like, again. You definitely just, wouldn't want to do that with a shotgun. No. No. Well, because that was, that's one thing I will say. I shot shotguns for a week at scout camp, right? Mm hmm. You know, skeet shooting is very, very uh, fun, but shooting them for a week straight, it did bruise my shoulder slightly. It's like my shoulder got a little bit sore after a while. I'm trying to adjust the. But the only time you would ever shoot shotgun that much that quickly is if you did have your own skeet shooter and just wanted to shoot, like, clay pigeons all the time. Which, we do or have a pigeon machine at. A pigeon Literally, pigeon if it was there. a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> I think that's the only two times you'd probably ever shoot shotgun that much in that small of a period yeah, of time. Yeah, in which, I do have a shotgun, I have a rifle, and I have a pistol. And honestly, I wasn't paying for my own ammo, so I probably still wouldn't shoot that much even if I did have my own clay pigeon. <laughs> well, shooter. that's the thing. I wasn't shotgun ammo is not either, as so. expensive. Shotgun ammo, it depends on the shotgun ammo. So still, if you're going to shoot you get, for a full week straight, like clay pigeons, like a couple hours a day, like and you're eventually going to start adding up money. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> but, well, again, dude, that's just why, you know, you... <laughs> that's why you, you plan out, like, how much you want to shoot. It's like, oh, we got 50 clay pigeons. All right, that's 25 for each of us. And also, I mean, it was... A full-size gun, and I was a kid. I was a Boy Scout, so... I mean, as an adult, maybe it wouldn't bruise my shoulder. No, no. Right now, you know, your muscle density's gone up a lot. Yeah, you. I think you'll be fine, dude. Anyway, let's get back to this. Yeah, of course. Isn't that the reason for half the things we do? You buy a slightly nicer car, or you cut your hair a certain way. Did you just do that haircut to look cool? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> the defining characteristic of the AR-15 is the speed and power of the bullet. <laughs> that whole defining feature of a bullet is that they go <laughs> fast and are yeah. powerful. Well, yeah, well the 5.56... Five, five, right I do like, who fired this bullet? <laughs> yeah. like, uh, technically, that I don't think that'd be a bullet. I think maybe, like, I don't know if that was a bullet. I don't know if it was a misfire or what, but I don't know. But a 5.56 is known for, like, how fast it is, how fast the bullet is. It's not known for power. If you want power, a 7.62 is, like, or, you know, a solid 45 uh, slug is just, like, that's power. That'll that'll stop you immediately. And 3.57 Magnum. Well, that's what, yeah. Well, Magnum, Ma well, 357 Magnum, like, depend on the chambering. A 357 Magnum, a 44 Magnum, a 45 ACP. Uh, then, of course, there's, you know, 50 cal, and then, set, uh, then you know, just ridiculous after that. I mean, I, anything above a 50 cal, I'm not really interested in shooting that much. I have fired a 50 cal once, and that thing is terrifying with the power that it has. Like, what the hell happened here? That looks like a classic, like, GoldenEye N64 bullet hole as well. It's, it's classic. It kind of does, like yeah. And these ones start disappearing. All right, Ordinary, thanks. Let's do gun lessons from people who also don't know much about guns, but I know a little bit. Do you know what the difference is between automatic, semi-automatic, yes. pump action? Uh -huh. Pump action is the one that where you oh, sort of, like, jerk the gun off before it'll fire again. <laughs> Semi-automatic's more like, do 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 Doo -doo. Yep, yeah, one trigger pull, one bullet. An yep. automatic is like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, you're holding yeah. it down and it goes all over the place. If I wanted to fire this on full semi-automatic, all I do is keep firing. Now, I will probably... <laughs> what does that mean? Full semi-auto... Uh, like, my dude, you're desperately trying to portray the AR-15 as an automatic. The only way you can make it automatic is if you mod it yourself. They are not legally allowed to sell it fully automatic. You, like, what, in full semi-automatic, yeah. Dude. It's because the dude doesn't even know what the <gasps> semi-automatic means. <laughs> I just keep firing. Like How do they both look like Tim Cook? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. He looks like Tim Cook and Mike Pence had a baby. <laughs> oh, <that's sweet. laughs> I don't like the way I can see the outline of his nipples through his shirt. I kind of <laughs> feel like, for the news, just where, like, I don't... Do you find it erotic? Can you yeah. not focus? Oh, the gay yeah. bomb went off. The is that one seems much lower than the other. Yeah, what's up with that? Like, can you see my nipples so much further? It's a weapon designed to inflict maximum damage. It's a weapon. 
It, it's, a it's a weapon. It's a gun. And not enough people are oh, using NordVPN. So much of their private data is out in the open. I have to show everyone why Dord matters. Da, 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 da. Huge deal on it for you. And pirating movies. I call the police. <laughs> Store his whip history. That guy is gay. <laughs> da, 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 da. He's not buying that for his dog. Are you sure it's Tim? <laughs> Start wrong building. Chinese spy. Yes, I'm just tired of being. Did you find some cream for that rash, Sarah? Oops. Take a breather, Nordman. Up, up, and away. Looks like I'm too late to save you hundreds of dollars with region-specific pricing <laughs> on funerals. <laughs> Why? I couldn't let you expose my secret. That I actually enjoy playing Field of Tanks Mobile. What? Goodbye. He could have just used Nord, nobody would have known. Will Nord survive? Will the sponsorship contract be renewed? <laughs> Find out next time on... Also, you get a huge deal of two-year plan, plus four free extra months, yay! Nord.com slash incognito. <laughs> I mean, his head's gone, so... Ed. Ed over. When I was a kid, there was this brand of sour candy called Toxic Waste. I, I had right? that. Oh, yes. I had yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It came in the little tub. I love that stuff. Oh, man. I've been addicted to sour candy since I can remember and of course you know the more that you're told that you're not allowed something the more alluring it becomes I was this about is true five six i'd sneak some change from the kitchen counter i would take a bit of a side route on the way home and go to the old dairy and sometimes they would have this sour candy and it was uh five cents a piece and uh, i'd go in there and i'd buy like a dollar's worth i'd scoff it all down the way home one day i got like five bucks worth of coins that gave you like 50 pieces and 50 pieces is way too many to finish by the time you get home. So I had like half a bag full. Um, I'm going to have to hide this somehow. I'll just hide it under my shirt. And I walked into the house thinking no one's going to be the wiser. And my sister, the first thing she saw, she's like, what's under your shirt? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> and I go running to my room. And maybe it was my mom and my dad. I don't know. They come running up. They go, what was that? What do you got? What do you got? I then like ran out and then I just ran to the neighbors. It was like being caught with drugs. And I knew this neighbor kid. And I was like, you got to take this you gotta take this and he takes it and then he hides it under the cushion and the couch wow. in the lounge. and then i walk out the door of the neighbor's place nothing <laughs> it wasn't anything still sweating from the sour candy as well <laughs> when i was a kid my contraband was a violent horror movies and such oh, no. and i remember one time my dad drove me to a sleepover and i wanted to bring some horror movies that i yeah. had squirreled away in my room this is great your mom's cleaning your room and she like looks under your bed and instead of like porno mags it's just Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, in fact, that did eventually <laughs> happen. <laughs> all right, now near things. Let me tell you all about the birds and bees. Oh, gee, pa, our oh, shucks. I don't know nothing about all that business. I was going to say, instead of the birds and the bees, it's the stabs and the slices. It's like, all right, son. Let me tell you about the stabs and the slices. It's like. Strauss's video is there. Oh shit, okay. <laughs> then you take her boyfriend's face and you oh, put it on your wall. face and that's when you run into the room. Possibly inspired by watching Midnight Express. Um, I yes. Like, <laughs> and I taped them to my torso under my t-shirt and I was just sat next to my dad on the, on the drive there. So did you get caught? No, I didn't. But uh, Oh, what? <laughs> Isn't there a big square outline <laughs> on your shirt? I think I put a, like a jumper on as well. Ah, I we'll jump I remember my dad saying like aren't you warm in that <laughs> i think it was summer and already sweating like, what if he catches me with kill bill volume two oh. under my <laughs> so did you watch the movie at the place so i don't think people were too impressed right <laughs> do you want to watch this some guy gets his head cut off i know man like just want to talk yeah. about girls and stuff. <laughs> we're just trying to have a good time <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, i was hoping i could ruin all your nights <laughs> oh oh People get a fake foot, they lose it in a... Bar brawl of some kind. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they give you yeah, a fake yeah. foot. So what would you do if you could have, like, any sort of fake foot 
become a weapon? What would the weapon be? Oh, well, how about it looks like a normal fur, mm, but then I, I take it off are. and it's just like one big titanium spike. Yeah. You could so like what? twist it off and replace it with other things, like a snooker cue. Don't so worry about it. What? Those feet that he was showing up, I don't know what those actually are. Those are like synthetic feet, aren't they? I don't think so. Well, I mean, technically, yes, but... Oh, I just thought of it. I know where your head's at, and I am ashamed. I'm ashamed, too, that I even oh, right. think of that. It's just, it's been ingrained into my brain by the you know, things one of, those, of like, the rappers. interwebs. Yeah, I, I get you. Okay, so this it's isn't okay. really a weapon. This is a multi-tool. Yeah, I think so. You I want would... a, like a Swiss Army foot. Yeah, a multi-tool. Yeah, why not? <laughs> it would be quite good. You're caught in the wilderness or whatever, and then you've just got a whole bunch of tools in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No well, that an axe. I would probably have, um, it would be a gun, for sure. This is when you're in the woods, is it? Well, see, well, I'm next to you right now. <laughs> I've got my multi-tool, kind of and I've on, just, like, uh, twisted. It's the fucking movie, um... Planet Terror. Yeah, with uh, yeah. with the uh, Cherry Darling. Yeah. yeah, she had the the M4 with the mm. grenade launcher attached, uh, and the and the big climax scene, and then she put the minigun on there at the ending. I remember. She that. somehow fired it without actually pulling the trigger, just by pointing her leg at people. Because why not, dude? It's just ridiculousness. Pretty much my axe attachment on and I'm just like kicking wood. I'm kicking trees down. <laughs> yeah, I'll shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll take your multi-tool. You won't have the twisty bit. Yeah, you've got it like a key. <laughs> exactly. It'll click out of one. The one of them is like a wheel powered by an engine that if I just balance on that one wheel, I can like go around like Rosie and the Jetsons. <laughs> <laughs> like those wheelie shoes, but it's diesel. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that's awesome. <laughs> As a, you know, someone who's completely normal and well adjusted, I have thought about if you were to kill someone, like what would be the best way to get away with it? Yeah. You know, people could have these elaborate plans of kill him and all like burn the body in the bath. Nah, mm. nah, the best way is just to find them on the street, let off two rounds and just walk away, hood up. Yeah. No fuss, no muss. I think you're right. Mm. Right. Let's plan a murder. Brilliant. Because I don't understand how it's done in the modern day and someone gets away with it. Yeah. Let's say I'm trying to kill you, right? Cool. Yeah. So first I have to find your address. I'd have to go to England. So now there's records of me searching your address. There's records of me being in the country. I Unless you use NordVPN. Place. I rent a car or I take an Uber and then all along that route are cameras that are tracking the license plate of the car I'm in. And I've got a phone on me and that's being constantly picked up on every cell tower. Yeah, the first thing you want to do is leave your phone at home. If you're Ubering to your murder, <laughs> I think like you're... Let's say I Uber within five kilometers of your place okay. and then I just start walking to your place. The whole route is going to have cameras along mm -hmm. it. I get to your place and what do I do? I like knock on the door and then you answer it and then I have to go like bang. Everybody sees. Look at this dude. No, okay. No. Nope. That means I need to break into your place. What do you do from there? This is becoming so difficult. I, I say you got to smash the window in and make it look like a robbery gone wrong. Bang. Uh, on the way out, I steal the DVDs real quick and just put them in my shirt. <laughs> and I, I guess you just sort of take off running. It'll still be a robbery gone wrong. And so they'll still start tracking these cameras. Yeah. They'll just start following the line. We got them. I think you're putting too much faith in the CCTV system. I think it is quite <clears throat> fallible. They're not everywhere. Right. Anyway, point is, it's impossible ordinary things. It cannot be done. I find that very difficult to believe. I just think, you know, if aliens are real, that just completely changes the way everyone sees the world. It'd be amazing. Maybe. What, what do you reckon the alien weapon would be? Well, the anal probe is the classic. When combined with the oh. K-bomb, it stops being a weapon. That is not a weapon. Oh, God. <laughs> it's a, a medical analytical tool. That's a good point. Do you reckon yeah. they clean the probe between analyzing humans? Depends what the aliens are doing with the probe in. Are, are, like, are they just m measuring butthole circumference for their files? <laughs> <laughs> what could be done there that wouldn't just be easily done with some sort of alien pill or an x-ray? I reckon they pull out- I was going out to say, I, I just, every time my like, butthole circumference is just like, how big is your butthole? Say when. <laughs> oh gosh. Can you poop shapes? That probe. Go, this is fucking disgusting. And then they just shoot everyone up the airlock. <laughs> they go, another one. They're all gross. This is gross every time. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. This is horrible. You would think there'd be just as much mouth probing <laughs> as there would be. Hopefully not with the same probe. <laughs> oh. oh, God. Oh, here we go. If you were going into a medieval battle, what's your choice? Wh- you know, they're all on a wall. Which do you pick? Which way, Spear. Western man? I feel the scythe is pretty useless in battle. A it is. mace, though. I think a mace, mace is, is good pretty stuff. cool. Right. Like, Shield and mace. It's bludgeon. It's sharp. It's easy to use. Um, I don't particularly want any of these, to be honest. That's picky. Wouldn't go with a um, scythe. Actually, not here for the battle. Like just the, the battle <laughs> yeah. field is just in need just of a bit of a train. Need so to if till I the field. weapon, it would just be like this. Sword yeah. and shield. I, I mean, it's a classic for a reason. Let's sword say you and board, me one yeah. on one, right? Oh, right? So I've got the spear. You've got the shield and sword. Who do you reckon wins? Uh, I reckon me. Reckon? I've just got to bide my time and get you to stick the spear into the shield. And then I'm just cutting your spear in half and you're done. I don't think you're blocking anything with that shield. Oh, you reckon? Yeah, I think I'm poking at you, poking at you, and you're moving your shield around, and then I managed to get just a little bit behind your shield at one point, and then I just press in. You can't get my fingers, though. That's cheating. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> Let's see, like, spear versus sword. Spear versus sword. Brilliant. We can put some money on it. All right. Yeah. Ooh, oh, I see. I see. Yeah, he's, he's sticking him. He's going to try and stick him good. I fought mud crabs more fearsome than you. I like the spin <laughs> technique. Mm. Like, so you don't know what, when it's coming. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, the, the, the charge is the thing. Mm. As soon as the spear guy has... It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Got you to stop within spear oh, distance. Yes. It's game over. Spear wins. Mm. The key is not to be spooked by mm. the spear. <laughs> yeah, don't fear the spear. Also, like also, this is just raw hot. sword. Like, mm-hmm. sword by itself is pretty effective, but against a spear, not as much. The spear wins like 60 to like 70% of the time. Half dressed by a bank robber and half dressed like a beekeeper <laughs> yeah, it's be protective gear yeah, yeah. It, give me all your bees <laughs> where's the queen <laughs> fear the sting of bee man just back on maces what do you think of this morning star oh i like there that. it is yeah, yeah. pretty good you know what the problem uh, is with this weapon it's got so many points and they're like if you hit someone right in the head with it in the heat of battle it is liable to get stuck mm. and then you're in the situation where you're like trying to pull Absolutely. it out of someone's head and then someone puts something in your head <laughs> be a yeah. cling too. Like, this yeah. thing would not go in the dish <laughs> I just like that animation. That was fucking great. <laughs> like just the facial expression just went well with it. <laughs> yeah, it's just like yeah. pull it out of someone's head, and then someone puts something in your head. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And all of a sudden, his eyes roll back, and he falls over. A bummer to clean too. Like this yeah. thing would not go in the dishwasher very well at all. No. What's the like really weak version of this? Like you could have this ball, but instead of spikes, you've got those like finger nail. Oh, the bugles! Tinkles. Come on! I'm trying to think of, like, a crack a version of the morning star. <laughs> mm, I like the idea of this. If it was much much smaller, like mm. the head was half the size of a golf ball, and it had these tiny little prongs, <laughs> it would be exceptional. For serving olives. <laughs> yeah, that's Yeah, it true. would be. I like that. Right? You could take one of these and then you just put like a dog too on it. <laughs> and then you just chase people around the battlefield with because no one wants to get the dog shit on them, you know? That's true. You'll be feeling yeah. It's like when you go to prison. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not strong. I don't have the option of like going up to the biggest guy in there and punching them. That wouldn't go well. No. Your only no, other option wouldn't. is to just act like the craziest fucker possible. I have shit on a stick. Utterly unpredictable. <laughs> terrifying human being. If you spill, you know... <laughs> Why is this funny to me? If you spill your apple juice right. over the front of your shirt, can you just pop back to your cell and throw on another shirt? Sure, no. Or are you like, oh, that's my only one. <laughs> and then you have to walk around as the guy with apple juice <laughs> down the front of your shirt. They must have a wardrobe. They must have a place where they put their pants and socks and toothbrush shivs and all sorts. That's a weapon. <laughs> Toothbrush, <laughs> toothbrush and shivs and sort shivs. Is that like a little Derringer pistol? Sergeant Hal Birchfield. Oh, everyone had those mustaches back in the when are they coming back? I can't really grow a mustache very well, so I'd be a bit upset if that happened. Really? I have a mustache, Let but me... it's a bit of a Howard Hughes sort of like pencil mustaches. Oh, well, <laughs> Let me have a look at this. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. See what I mean? I've got what I like to call the anti Hitler. I can't grow it in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, 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 That's continue. good. Have you ever noticed how 
people from Eastern Europe tend to have that sort of facial hair, the same sort of facial hair that you do. To be honest, I can't say I have noticed that, but I'm I'm willing to go okay. ahead with okay. it. Serbian man. All these men have uh, thick mustaches, so I'm not sure your theory. Slavic holds. man. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all oh, the, the part Why is PewDiePie there? You typed in why did you man. type PewDiePie? But, type PewDiePie. No, no. Why did PewDiePie show up? Sorry. Yeah. Why is PewDiePie there? What? Why? Felix is from Sweden. <laughs> He's not Slavic. I have no idea. Like, oh man. <laughs> yeah. No, it's all falling apart real quick. I'm amazed that you've typed in Slavic man and none of them are squatting. You know what? Well, oh, okay. Okay. Sucks. Hold on. Hold on. And not only PewDiePie. Quick. I'm amazed that you've. Why is it? Oh, okay, that is Slav Iron Man, Slavic Iron Man. Okay, that's... I thought that was Robert Downey Jr. there for a second. Typed in Slavic Man and none of them are squatting. You know what? This theory sucks. These people will have regular moustaches. I don't know why you proposed it, to be honest. It's kind of <laughs> and it's not true. While we're on racist things, I've got one more. <laughs> Go on. Wow. Yeah, please, continue. <laughs> have you ever noticed that Asian people, when they park their car, <laughs> uh -oh. always park their car backwards into the car space that <laughs> i do I that say bro that I... I do that i do that a lot yeah, I... I basically never do that it's not worth it it is to me because get out quicker especially if it's in a parking lot like that i want to be able to see what's coming and be like all right i'm clear versus all of a sudden i'm backing out and then uh, you know, I don't see it because, you know, it's... It, looking behind you is much more of an inconvenience than just like, hmm. I just always back out incredibly slowly and look very carefully behind me in all directions. I, me and my dad, I my go dad so did slow that, that someone would have to hit me rather than me hit them, you know, for me to get in well, an accident. That well, way. again, I just blew up a internet historian's theory because, you know, I'm not Asian. I mean, I'm part, like, Polynesian. Well, he wasn't saying that people who aren't Asian don't do that. But he's just like all Asians do that. And I'm like, well, uh, actually, the more benefit, the more like that, uh, you know, thing that would blow up his theory is if there was an Asian man who said, "I don't do that." <laughs> yeah, I've spent enough time observing other people parking. That Here's alone... my experience, right? I live near a pretty Asian suburb. Right, I love it. I love going down there, shopping there all the time. Mm -hmm. Where you normally see people parking, they just you know drive forward straight in. But for some reason, every time the local residents here park, they reverse in. And I'm thinking like, is it something they are culturally taught that has some sort of advantage? Okay, in an emergency, you can drive out faster. Is that what it's about? Hmm. Is it like, oh, I want to show off my car? Yeah, look at the front, much nicer. That's interesting. I'm going to go out mm. on a limb and say it is representative mm. of a culture. It's a that cultural difference, plans. I would say. Ordinary things, bigot confirm. <laughs> Oh, God. I would say it is a cultural thing. I'd say culturally, you know, overseas it is, you know, like, parking is different in certain Do me a countries. favor real quick. What's up? Mute the microphones. No, it was not what I was expecting. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna purposefully like m do that to make it look like you said something absolutely heinous. Post production, Nate. You know what you must do. <laughs> Oh god. People are gonna be pissed at me and then like yelling and shit and then you're gonna be like, actually this is actually what happened and they're gonna be like, Oh really? Oh yeah. no, I'm gonna go I'm gonna li live it up, man. It's just like I can't believe he said it. I can't repeat it here. Yeah. I'll I'll talk to you in Discord and tell you what he said, and then I'll like go on there and I'll like give him the truth. I wanna do I wanna like reel this out as long as I can. Anyway. <laughs> I wanna be an asshole about that. Anyway. <laughs> 
back to this. <laughs> if you're done with your racist tirade, ordinary things, I'd like to move back onto the the topic at hand. I do have an Asian. Just because you have an Asian story. friend does not make you not racist. Wait. Have you ever been to Cambodia? No, I haven't. When I was there back in the day, I got in their taxi and the guy was like, "Oh, you're new here," and mm. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, obviously." <laughs> and then he said, "Do you want to go to the firing range?" And I was like, "Yes. Huh. You can use huh. a machine huh. gun. You can use Uh-oh. some handguns." I was like, "That's sick." And then he went up a level and was just like, "If you've got 200 American dollars, you can even fire a rocket launcher at a cow." <coughs> no way. You see, yes. Right? I wouldn't fire it at a cow, but dude, if I could fire an RPG, that'd be actually pretty cool. Dude, firing an RPG, dude. I'd love to fire an RPG. We don't have those here in the States, legally. I mean, in Cambodia, I mean, I guarantee you, they're just like, we have a weapon surplus. Hey, it's $200. We got this shit for free. I don't know if I would really want to fire one that badly. Just because there is the percent chance that something goes wrong with it. The failure rate, though, is infinitesimal. Especially if it's an RPG 7 or higher. Like, it is about impossible for it to like go wrong yeah, fair enough i mean i'm more i'm like the mark three i'll just be slightly worried about pulling myself up the mark three <laughs> rocket launchers that they had like from in the vietnam era i would not fire one of those to save my life because there are so many failure stories of that just like that thing just like blowing up in people's hands and killing like killing people no rpg7 though i mean I give it. I give it to. Uh, I think it was the Russians who came up with the RPG sevens. Uh, let me, let me be doubly sure on that. Uh, hold on. RPG seven. Russian. It was Russian. Okay. I, I just wanted to make doubly sure that it was Russian because I didn't want to like incorrectly attribute it to just be like, oh no, it was actually like. Uh, like uh, the Ukraine or something like that. So, yeah. It'd be pretty cool to get to shoot one at like an old tank that was like decommissioned. Oh, dude, yeah, that'd be the shit. Just to see what it I'm not gonna fire it at a cow, though. That cow did nothing wrong. Right? Yeah, that's a little fucked up. <laughs> I will admit that the option did intrigue mistakes, me. Though. But I was pretty broke back then, so... <laughs> and also, it would have right. been a bit gross, and maybe I would have felt a bit ashamed of myself. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I went. I didn't use the rocket launcher, but I did hock a grenade, which was fun. Cow killer confirmed. Yeah. Oh, you threw a grenade? What was that like? Yeah, it was great. Was it spooky? I was scared. The guy, he could tell. Oh, God, this nervous <laughs> Englishman is going <laughs> to yeah. drop oh, into shit. his shoe or something. I also saw the pen where they had all the sheep and cows. Oh no, their little nervous faces. I'd be nervous that like the pen wouldn't want to come out that easily. And so I'd hold it in one hand and then pull the pen. But then I'd also pull the grenade out of my hand <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> and if the safety you would... would play football with a grenade, would it ever explode as long as the pen didn't come out? I think not because the whole point... I know, the no, pen... no. There have been instances of people... Like the pen is supposed to like start the the charge or set the explosion like process off and if you damage it enough it will explode like there was this kid who uh ran over it with his car and it cracked the uh it cracked the internals and it exploded immediately because it immediately ignited the primer i mean grenades are nothing to f about with man i mean they're dangerous but yeah is creating a chemical reaction with something like a piece of metal yeah. that something's connecting. Yeah. Okay, I've got a better question. You pulled out the pin, right? Yeah. Do you think you would be capable of pulling that out with your teeth? No. Really? It wasn't quite like a key of a car, but it was like there was a bit more of a mechanism to it. Ah, yeah. Interesting. Because I've seen that with like, you know, there's Tom Cruise at the end of that movie that's on the screen right now. And he, he's got like a mouthful of grenade pins at the end. And he's like, ha I've defeated the big bad. And I was always wondering like, oh, it's not that easy to do. Also, I didn't realize uh, you had the expertise. Also... I still, every time I see Tom Cruise's face, I still can't unsee it. The one tooth in the middle of his head, in the yeah, middle of his head. how fucking unsymmetrical his teeth are. Yeah. Like, ha, like, they're perfectly white, perfectly straight, but... Yeah, that tooth is directly below his nose. Yes. Like, the middle of his nose lines up with that tooth. That yes. It's, like, so far off center. That is weird. 
it's well, it's because of all the work he had done on his mouth in the '80s. Because did you ever see him in like uh, I think it was The Outsiders in '83? His teeth were like fucked up, dude. They were like all crooked and jangled up and all that. And he got them fixed by the time Risky Business happened. And yeah, it took the internet a long time to notice. But then they started noticing, and everyone's just like, now they can't unsee it. I remember when Zach showed me, I'm just like, I can't believe I never noticed before. Right. And it's, ah, ha, ha, I've defeated the big bad. And I was always wondering, like, oh, I bet that's not that easy to they do. They are amazing. I, didn't really I wonder if that's how he fucked up his teeth. <laughs> if I'm completely honest, I, I didn't really feel like much of expertise. I could only afford one. It's funny, um, the guy who's editing this, he's ex-army. Oh, right. So he's probably, like, laughing at us right now. Because I'm sure he's got all sorts of experience with, like, grenades and tanks and shit. Tanks? I'd, I'd like to drive a tank. That would, I mean, wherever lets me do that, that would be sweet. You go to Arnold Schwarzenegger's house, dude. Would you no! go back to Cambodia now? Yes, if only for the breakfast. The Cambodian breakfast is exceptional. Really? Why? It's like pork and rice, but my god, the pork is absolutely delicious. Oh. My core memory of the three weeks I spent there was just like getting up every morning and being like, another breakfast, please. Delicious. <laughs> yum, yum. Okay, okay. There's no breakfast food that I like, but in like Asian countries, it's like, what's for breakfast? What? Well, like duck and chili. What? Okay, hold on. Okay. Oh, it's the ingredients from a pie, but without the delicious middle. What? You can make croissants that have that have the pocket. I've I've uh, had a I've had a family member make the uh, croissants that this have like got actual quotes from when you asked him about breakfast. From your story when I asked him about the no breakfast. That's all right, but it just fill up on sugar for breakfast. Food that I like. Cake. Who eats cake for breakfast? But in like eight, like, not when I first wake up. Okay, that's understandable. Asian countries. It's French toast. Toast. If someone gave me cooked bread for dinner, I'd it'd be terrible. But because it's breakfast, that, that's not that's not just toast, bro. It's like what's more cake. Yeah, you're okay. How dare you say that about bacon, sir? For breakfast, well. And then of course the waffle. Okay. I like breakfast food. Breakfast food is one of my favorite meals out there, man. Breakfast is my favorite meal. Like duck and chili on rice with some green beans. Yeah, perfect. You're setting yourself up for the morning. Mm. You should be loading up. <clears throat> the biggest meal of the day should be in the morning. Times That's to see what he thinks. Huh? He's let me make him breakfast a couple times and see what he thinks. Oh yeah, yeah. You you can make those uh, like top tier, uh, top tier uh, like English some, muffins. Yeah, some uh, in sausage and cheese English muffins. Yeah, he makes Gordon Ramsay style uh, Gordon eggs. Gordon Ramsay style scrambled eggs on yeah. toast. <laughs> I've tried it. It's actually really good. I wonder what internet historian would think of that. Plus, he'd have to like I'd have to make him like a good like make him like a good American style breakfast, like biscuits, gravy, sausage, eggs. Egg. Uh, see, the the idea of biscuits and gravy freaks out British people. Rock is told. I, I, I know that. I know because, because of their idea of what gra Brits, yeah, of biscuits are. No, their idea of what gravy is. Well, the biscuits oh. too, but gravy in particular is like gravy, something you put on turkey, and it's like, oh, it's not the same kind of gravy. Not the same kind of gravy. It's yeah, different. Like, and, it's uh, what I found out different. is they actually have something very, very similar to our breakfast gravy. Oh, really? But they call it bread sauce. And I was like, this is more like what our gravy is. It's the bread sauce. <laughs> bread sauce. Okay. Okay. That's fair. I will yeah. give it that. I will, I will give it that. Because, I mean, it's like flour is like one of its... It is. Flour so. plus, you know, plus <clears throat> various other things that you put. It depends on what you put in. Me, I use sausage whenever I make mine. You know, I like cut up little bits of sausage and put my put it in mine. I, we call that sawmill gravy because it was literally anything you could put in that, you know, and yeah, it, it, was, it was fun. It was, fu it was fun making that with my dad the first time start my morning i have sausage eggs bacon the whole nine yards so i just get up oh hell and yeah bro my little gullet with oh my i also wonder whether it's like the cuisine that is in european and western societies required so much preparation that there were only certain things that you could get done by breakfast time yes i think in other countries it's someone's job to get up really early and cook for like yeah. everyone else you know what i'm saying i know what you're trying <laughs> to say it's then you didn't drive a tank in cambodia because they passed them all backwards. <laughs> <laughs>
Ooh, magical <laughs> weapons. Excalibur, sword in the stone. What's the one that's found in a lake with a that lady? That is also Excalibur. That's also Excalibur. <laughs> I think one of the stories is that when King Arthur dies, he just like tosses it in a lake. Ah, uh, no man can pull the sword from this stone. Mm. These strong men come along and they're pulling at it and smudging up the handle. <sighs> up comes Arthur. Oh, please. Oh, go on then, sir. Can I ever go on the sword in the jig? Oh, we'll all be laughing at you, kid, but go on. I guess he lubes it up and then he just pulls it yeah, out. it's easy for him. That's the idea, isn't it? That means he gets to be mm. king, which is an interesting system of governance. <laughs> I reckon we should go back to whoever's the strongest gets to be the leader. I like that idea. Once in a while I do see someone who's kind of weak and pathetic and I think, why do you get to be in charge? Well, I think it's it should be whoever's the strongest out swords or from who... lakes and isn't basis for a system of government. Oh god, you're quoting Monty Python. <laughs> Pretty much. I can't remember the exact quote. Like, like that. Look here, just because some lady comes out of a lake and starts throwing swords around doesn't mean that it's a stable form of government. <laughs> I, rem I remember that. Yeah. Who's ever slept with the most women? Hey, now you're thinking. But how would you prove that you would slip with the most number of women in order to become <laughs> the king? I just like the idea that the, a guy would show mm. up and just be like, yeah, I'm running for president, and here is a list of 50 women you can call them up. Here's a few kids. <laughs> what? Whoa, that's a, that's a, okay, that list. I need to see that list. Women you can call them up. Frederick, uh, Knudsen, Anna Kendrick, I will kill you. Uh... <laughs> Just joking. Hillary Clinton, Joan of Arc, Marilyn Monroe, Oprah Winfrey, Beyonce, Scarlett Johansson, Marie Curie. Why Yoko Ono? Get her off there. Shakira, Emma Watson, Whoopi Goldberg, and Betty White. <laughs> I like the last one's Betty White. I mean, that'd be an accomplishment. Go for it, man. The woman's about to hit the century mark. Here's a few kids that look like me for a proof. It's like a bad list of reference. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Terrible list hey, of reference. Can I use you as a reference? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, are you running for president? So instead of having a sex scandal, it, mm. it, it would be like, yeah, it turns out he wasn't having that many affairs. Oh, no, he was loyal to his wife. Uh, What's going on? <laughs> Get him out of there. How hard is it to put a sword in the stone? That's a really good point. That would be much more difficult than pulling it out of the stone. So the guy who put it in there, that should be the guy who's the king. Okay, what else we got for mystical weapons? Poseidon has a trident. Poseidon's trident, good one, yeah. So he can command the sea with that, can't he? He can like make the waves move, make the fish fuck each other, something like that. If your yeah. trident hmm. controls the ocean, what's the point of like the pointy bit? Like he's not using the trident as well as a weapon, right? Wait, yeah. what's the point of a trident? That's a good point. Yeah, actually, what has a trident got to do with the sea? What is a trident? Is it used for catching fish? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was its original purpose. Tridents were used by fishermen in the Aegean Sea to catch fish. And thus, that's why it was associated with sea, the sea. And that's why Poseidon, in the in the Greek legends, often got a, often got a trident. I oh, know. I never thought about this. There's a three-pronged spear is used for spearfishing. No way. Oh, yeah, okay. I guess it does make sense. If you're like going at a school of fish, you, you want as many <laughs> prongs as you can get. Yeah. What you really want is a five-pronged spear, right? Because, see, this is 2D. Explain why it's five better than... No. Okay, hold on. It goes down like that. Yeah, I'm with you so far. Now, if you've got a spear mm. that goes like this, then, oh shit, I missed it. Or the fish was over here, and so I missed it. So what they're doing is they're making two more prongs. Nice. But that's only 2D. What you really want is five because- Yeah, I mean, that is superior. Prophecy is true. Yeah. I can see that. I think, yeah, I in contrast that, to this extremely bloodthirsty and violent oh, episode, no, we should walk through a meadow, like... holding hands, All right, we'll into the what? sun. There's like the end, and it's like, oh no, why is there still five minutes left? <laughs> I guarantee you they're just gonna have like a basic <clears throat> convo here. Or it's there's just actually gonna not be five minutes left. Yeah, there's like, Only like four, four and minutes and, and 30 seconds left, yeah. <laughs> on sat. Yeah, we'll do that for about three seconds until the <laughs> yeah. editor gets bored. Yeah. No, all right, outro. Right, first thing I'm going to do is fill in that moustache gap. No, stop it. I've got a permanent stop doing that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm hacking the mainframe, and um, I'm going to turn your webcam on. No, <laughs> don't. Hey, everyone, he's a furry. He's wearing his fursuit now. <laughs> right, right. I'm going to be an unsuspecting victim, and you are going to be an assassin. Brill. Okay. And if you manage to kill me, then the episode ends. Otherwise, 
I'm just going to keep rambling. Okay, well, I'm coming up behind you with a plastic bag, manhunt style. Hey, no, I, you can't just walk into my house. I keep the door locked. <laughs> That's why I kicked it in with my muscles. I heard that. Now I've run up to my panic room. I'm on the phone with the police. Don't worry, the police are in my pocket. Drives the entire police. It yes. was easy. Now I'm going to put some C4 around the corners of your panic room, and I'm going to blow this bitch up. Button press. I now open the door with my scythe, <laughs> and, and I begin to sweep at your legs. Ah! Swish, swish. Now the hunter has become the hunter. Get away! I'll swat your hand away and pull out a funky-looking knife. Oh no, it's got dog do on the end of it. <laughs> it's a Damascus blade. <laughs> All right. Get in your panic room. I'm now running up the stairs and doing a very difficult action for the editor to keep up with. Don't worry, I'll make it easier for you by flinging a shuriken into the back of your head. Yeah, I like the idea that I'm running away, right, in mid-sentence. <laughs> We've got to end this episode, and I'm going to end it by ending you. Okay. I break down your door, and I start throwing some shurikens at you. Ah, too late. I have picked up a wooden table and... Well, that's okay, because that was just my distraction for my real plan, which is to feed you this delicious poisoned apple. You cannot resist its juicy goodness. I already had breakfast. Oh, what did you eat? It was some duck, some chilli, and some green beans from Cambodia. Oh, that oh, God. sounds absolutely delicious. I've really lost the appetite for murder. Would you instead like to hold hands and have a delicious Cambodian breakfast? That sounds lovely. Maybe... We could kill a cow as well, like you did in that Cambodia. That is not canon. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> a small Cambodian refugee. They had survived a much worse country and finally made it to Cambodia. The place where they could finally prosper. But then they ended up in a hole, receiving the, the bad end of a grenade from ordinary things. <laughs> Boom. Is Let's try something else. Yeah. Everyone. Go to your computer right now. Type in tickets to Syria. Comma. What happens oh my. if I destroy my passport? <laughs> How do I renounce my citizenship? How to buy ammo on deep slash dark web. How to smuggle cash on plane. <laughs> do x-rays detect LSD? I'm not doing <laughs> this, FBI. Don't kill, wow. <laughs> Don't kill me. Don't kill me. What's like a shitty version of Pablo Escobar? No outro this time. Video is over. <laughs> Damn. Okay, so fair some weird recommended videos there oh, well, which one shit. do you want to watch we should watch one of my videos oh my I god they I fooled me myself and listening to myself yeah me too mm. it's one of my videos wait okay minecraft canceled new allegations cancel adolf hashtag <laughs> top 10 horniest <laughs> characters is spider-man actually illegal fail compilation afghanistan edition <laughs> you won't believe what he did real <laughs> Summoning real sussy baka. No. <laughs> Macho Rogan giving monkeys DMT. <laughs> Illegal memes. Largest object in the universe. I keep seeing that pop up all over the place too. Why I'm quitting YouTube forever. Yeah, I'll believe when I see it. They're real xenomorphs. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Videos in the recommended. No? Oh, that's fine. Doesn't matter. No, I haven't watched your videos in ages. No. Is it just me? Um, or do you also have like tremendous contempt for the audience? I hate them. Can't stand them. Like I, I hate the fans. They're the worst. I want to turn a weapon on them and then onto myself. I, hate me I too. just want to tell them. Fuck off. <laughs> oh no, the video's still going. <laughs> oh God. Oh. In the lounge. <laughs> Quick, cause a distraction. Quickly. Uh oh. Now the Spanish version of the same video has started playing. Wait, quick, what's the Spanish word for weapons? Armas. 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 Casca e armas. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm just about to do that. Casca e armas. I'm doing the intro. Armas. I'm doing the Spanish intro, baby. Okay, maybe something like, Ah, uh, welcome to this Spanish version. It is exactly the same content. Instead, it is a lot sexier. <laughs> ah, a beautiful weather woman has entered the room. And we shall make sweet music together. Bing, 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 bing. And then we just like clicking on the maracas. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is going to be a 10 minute outro. And then I drown myself mm. in the toilet. Yes. <laughs> All right. Bye, ordinary <laughs> thing. <laughs> All right. Is it actually over? Okay. We're good. We're good. Oh, man. Internet historian. What the hell, man? What the hell? <laughs> That's good. Good content. <laughs> <laughs> Top quality content, man.
Jesus, wep. It's awesome. So yeah, weapons by internet historian. Holy crap. Jesus. That was a long video, but in all honesty, it maintained my interest all the way throughout. I mean, I, I really liked it a lot. God. So, and I think we pretty much said all we need to say, man. I mean, internet historian always brings a fire. He also always, like, completely destroys my expectations. And I gotta be, and I gotta thank him for making me confident in my weapons. You know, I mean, Nick, Nick and I both, we have, we have our knives here and we aren't going to fight each other. No, we're not. Ah! Yeah, yeah, same. It's a Dr. Frankenstein joke. Frankenstein. Oh, God. So, yeah, I'm... <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what movie that was. Where he's, like, getting all hyped up, and he has the scalpel over it, and he's like... And, just, and he's just like, class dismissed. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> So, all right, that's going to do it, everyone. Thank you all very much for tuning in. This was Weapons by Internet Historian Incognito Mode. Uh, yeah, or just Incognito Mode is what they, he's calling it now. So, thank you all again, and until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. We'll see you, everybody. Peace out.